Yo, just want to take a quick second, remind you guys, everything is recorded live on Twitch. So if you enjoy the video, come say what's up, drop a follow, I'd appreciate it. Thank you. Okay, so first things first, let's watch the clip initially, and then we will watch it back and we'll break down who's making good peaks and who's making bad peaks. Okay, so here's one thing about playing cover. When you're peeking off of a corner and an actual like flat piece of wall, anyone who's in my position that's aiming at you, all they have to do is watch exactly one point for when you round the corner, they're going to see you no matter what. But when you're peeking from this enemy's POV in this instance, he has to actually like look at all of the terrain and try to make out where I am because he's the person swinging out of cover and he's looking at such a broad area where there's so many spots where I can be hiding. So if you don't know exactly where someone is when you're swinging out from a piece of cover, you're at a major disadvantage if you actually need to take the time to spot the person you're fighting. So unless you know how to pre-fire where somebody's sitting, it is a very bad play to just take a wide swing like that without any info. The first guy I killed is a prime example of when you don't know exactly where somebody's sitting, that's when it's useful to do a jiggle peek or a like circle strafe around a corner. Because it allows you to get some info, figure out where the dude is, and then get into cover quickly in case it's a really bad peek. So when it comes to playing cover effectively, there's something extremely useful to do, and it's playing line of sight on the person that you're fighting. So in this instance, I am running up, I hear this guy ADS on my right side, so I decide to backpedal and take a wide wrap around this dude, and assuming that he's listening for my audio, he now assumes that the person he saw is behind him slash to his very close left, and it leaves a wide opening for my teammate, who took my original position to go for an early shot on this guy while he's not expecting it. There's a guy directly under me, you see me? Yeah. While the entire time that this guy is looking for me, opening himself up to my teammates, I'm playing in an area where he has absolutely no ability to shoot me, and if he decides to walk outside of the cabin to aim up top, he'd be leaving his back open to my teammates, while the entire time I can aim into the garage and pressure the guy from peeking out and hurting any of my teammates in the same process. So we're basically choking these guys into not having any play, and they just die if they overextend. Did you, I don't see a body. Did he go up? Not back. I got him. He was definitely inside. That flick. Another one dead. where we came in. There's a guy outside these bushes, too. Where we came in, guys. Killed another. Okay, okay, okay. I am like 10 HP, 10 HP. Yeah, it's just this segment towards the end of the fight where my teammate's on top of the truck is a prime example of where sprint free looking is extremely useful. It basically allows me to gather info anytime I'm not directly behind a piece of cover and I'm moving across an opening. And then anytime I have a piece of cover between me and where my teammates tell me the person is, I'm running directly towards them to close the gap. So I'm just getting closer and closer and picking up free info without ever really exposing myself to take a lot of damage. Not dead. Kill them, kill them. Again. This is why I'd say a lot of top tier players that you may watch on Twitch or YouTube, you'll see them sprint free look past doorways a lot. And the reason is, is because they don't want to just run in a straight line or stand still in the middle of a doorway when it opens, because it's really easy to punish you. And if you're just hear a door swing open and then there happens to be a guy in it, you know you only need to aim at one point. So it's really easy to pick up kills and it's just a really bad play to walk straight through a door after opening it. A useful way to think when you're fighting multiple people, pushing you from different areas off different pieces of cover, is think about any old like stealth game you played that has like a mini map or a radar on the top of your screen. It shows an enemy blip and then it shows their line of sight slash like cone of what they're able to see in front of them. It's really useful to think like this because you know that if this specific target is going to wrap around me and then I'll end up getting pinched, it's more in my interest to push into this guy and try to kill him early so that I remove what he can see, and then I can use his piece of cover as cover against his teammate. So in this clip, I know that the area around me is extremely flat, and I can kill this guy and run upstairs and have this elevated position. 
and then it basically makes it so that I can peek down and choose who I want to fight one by one. And if I ever get lit up badly, I know I can just prone, get really low to the ground. Nobody's going to be able to see me when I'm low on the second floor. And then all I have to do is if I start getting pushed, I know I can aim at one spot, which is the staircase. And then I can kill whoever is like the biggest threat. As soon as I pull up on this area, you can already see that I'm gathering as much info as I can, and I'm opening doors so that I can play space if I need to. So a lot of the things in this clip I mentioned in my last video, if you didn't watch that, make sure to check it out. But some of those prime examples are giving myself plenty of room to space, making sure to open extra doors and make sure I have extra area to run around while I'm fighting these guys. Try not to corner myself. Knowing that there's two people not overextending, even though I have this easy audio bait that they want me to swing in and kill this guy metting while the other guy holds, I made sure not to go too hard. And just trying to isolate 1v1s across this duo because they're both playing this pretty well. But the issue is, as soon as the fight started, they pinned themselves in the small room. If I pin myself in that same situation and I had to run away and hit a reload, but I was solo in that room, you know they would just push in and kill me. I want to show you guys a raw fight, no editing, on how when two players know how to read info really, really well, and they understand the layout of the area, how intense and how long fights can be. Motherfucker. Good fight on that guy. Holy shit. <laughs> Dude, that guy played that so fucking well. That's going to be the end of today's video. But if you guys enjoy the video, make sure to like, comment, share it. It means a lot. It was crazy how well my last video did when it's one of like the first times I've actually spent effort into making a video. And it feels good to see it pay off so well. So uh, thank you for all the support on the last one. And I hope you guys enjoy this one as much. But uh, yeah, I'll hopefully upload again within... I'd say give it a week's time and yeah, hope to see you guys again soon.